Hey guys, Ivan here and in today's video we got a couple of very interesting bodybuilding updates and as you can see we are starting with Patrick Moore That's right, in case you guys forgot who he was He was 10th at one of the weakest Mr. Olympias ever 2019 He came in with really good condition and that was basically the only time he brought that kind of condition and with his aesthetics and shape he did very well, he was basically a star at that time and a lot of people thought he was the future of bodybuilding because he just came to the scene and immediately he got down to the Mr. Olympia with beautiful shape and so on. We were comparing him to young Ronnie Coleman, we thought he had that kind of potential, but in the upcoming years he never lived up to it. He kept competing though, but he never got that 10th at the Mr. Olympia ever again. Also, he never replicated that 2019 Mr. Olympia conditioning, so he was just competing with worse conditioning and with like same level of muscularity. He never improved upon the most important factor in his physique. His nickname was, and still is, the future. Anyways, now we got a new physique update and this is the first time since I've been following this guy that I see a bulked up version of him that he's finally doing an off-season. As you can see, he is coached by Dom Cardone and Dom says Patrick Moore at his biggest ever. The goal was very simple, make everything grow and keep the waist tiny, attaining a more 3D look, especially growing his legs, was critical. Still a lot more left in the tank, he'll be on stage at some point this year, conditioning will be no issue. So finally he realized that this is what he needed to grow, to get bigger. And in the comment there you can see, he says, he replies to Dom Cardone, he says, I remember being pretty anxious to get back on the stage, and you replied, let's grow some more first. So, Dom saw it, of course, everybody, the whole internet saw it, I mean, everybody was pretty much always talking about this one thing about Patrick Moore, that he needs more mass, and somehow he failed to see it, he thought he was big enough, I guess, so he thought he should just continue competing, and here he wanted to start the prep immediately with Dom, however, he persuaded him to do a little bit of an off-season, and you know, he looks good, like, he looks definitely bigger than ever, I don't think I ever saw him this big, conditioning is also pretty decent, it's, it's good conditioning, and like, he looks, you know, bloated, I would say he looks watery, I don't see a lot of fat though, like, he looks just bigger, I mean, this is a perfect state for him to actually grow some freaking tissue, but unfortunately, as you can see, Patrick is not patient enough to wait for longer to compete next year, because in my opinion he needs like, I don't know, two years of an offseason to be actually competitive against the top guys. And the thing with him is he can't just blow up and then maintain the fullness and not get super conditioned, no, no, he's not on that level, he must be super, super lean, diced, the way he was in 2019, if he wants to do something. He is not like Samson Dowd or Andrew Jack or all these guys who are mass monsters, who are known for their shape, who are super full and round everywhere. Patrick needs to be shredded and he needs more actual tissue. So I think a longer offseason would make more sense. This seems like it's gonna be a shorter one. So I don't like that. I wish he continued putting on the mass. And if this guy actually added like 20 pounds of muscle, let's say, and actually got into that 2019 condition again, he could do some damage. He really does have a nice structure, like super small waist, you know, peaky biceps, very complete from head to toe, from the front and from behind, from the sides. The only thing is mass and again, bring the same conditioning, like a really good conditioning again. We'll see what's gonna happen this year, I'm expecting a little bit of an improvement, because finally he's doing an off-season, but like, crazy amount, you know, for him to like be one of the top guys at the Mr. Olympia, I don't see that this year, but maybe in a couple of years, who knows, I mean, his nickname still is the future, right? Alright, the next thing is very interesting, kinda funny though, Beef Stew just posted a screenshot of his conversation with Tyler Mannion, the vice president of the IFBB Pro League, and also a professional judge, a head judge. So Beef Stew asked him, hey Tyler, serious question, do you think I get knocked down for my hair in judging? And Tyler Mannion said, 100% no, hairstyle has no bearing at all on placings. I mean, like, I spoke about this briefly on my channel, on my video about the California Pro, I mean, you guys, if you guys watched it, you know that I was like, was Beef Stew robbed? I thought he deserved better, I thought he was at least second or even first, I mean, I thought he could have beaten Tony Burton, 
However, they put him super low, you know, fourth place. Ahead of him, they had Emi Romeragic, of course, Tony Burton, and Christian Wolski. All these three guys right here beat Beef Stew. However, he was bigger. He was in really good condition. I think he was probably in better condition than Tonio. Much, much improved from the New York Pro, and Tonio was worse. I didn't see it this way. I don't know what happened. And I thought maybe it has something to do with the hair. I mean, I said it jokingly, but let's be real here, guys. Look at his hair. I mean, it does look cool on him, sure, and he's different than most people, like, most bodybuilders are bald, and he has a nice, good, thick head of hair, which is awesome. He does look, I guess, kinda, I don't know, aesthetic, old school, but isn't it kinda distracting? Isn't it a bit too much? Too big? Too weird? I mean, I heard it so many times from people who spoke to the judges, the judges prefer a clean-cut look. So no beards, no crazy hairs, it's kind of same like if you showed up without teeth and you were smiling, or if you came in dirty without taking a shower for two months, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, it shouldn't have a bearing on physique, on judging, but it's still distracting. Ideally, the judges should only be seeing a physique and not paying attention to anything else on one's body, but how do you not pay attention to a crazy hair like this? Come on. And I'm not saying shave your head and be bald like the rest of us. I'm not saying cut it super short like he did the past off season, because it does look weird on him. With the shape of his head, you know, being bald, it's it's not a good look for him, but take a look at this. This is when it grew a little bit more. This is fine, this is great, it looks good on him, and it's not too distracting, it's not crazy. I mean, showing up with a hair like that, it kinda looks like he's trolling everybody, he's trolling the judges. You know, I know he's not doing that, I know he likes his hair to be that way, I mean, I think so, but look at this, this is definitely much nicer, you know, clean cut and tidy, and as far as Tyler Mannion not saying anything on this, of course he's not gonna say it, he's the vice president of the IFBB, he's not gonna put it out there to be out publicly, like, you lost because you had too long of a hair. You know, he's never gonna say that. No judge will say that public like that in a DM. If you approach them after the show, some judges will tell you that. I mean, many judges will tell you that. Because that's a thing. It's definitely a thing. I remember very clearly Guy Sternino talking about this, about his beard, actually. And his beard is very good, like, it's very thick, so it's very nice and clean, and he shaves it, like, in that way that looks, like, really clean cut. But still, the judges told him, shave it. Because it's distracting. And he did it, and he plays better. So this guy, Beef Stew, should definitely consider it, at least. If he's that stubborn and he likes it that way, sure. If it's that important to him, more than placing, sure, I get it. But after dropping down two places and actually losing to a worse version of Tony Burton for no reason, no obvious reason at all, and he was actually even improved, maybe he should consider this. Maybe, maybe. Whatever you guys think, tell me down below. Alright, next, we got some footage of Jeff Said, who officially came back to competitive, uh, how do I call this, I wanna say bodybuilding, but I don't know, he did a show, he did a natural show, I think it's a drug-tested show, the results are not still in, but if he did it, I guess he's natural, and this is what he looked like, it was nostalgic, I felt like I was in 2015 again, so this is what man's physique basically used to look like back in the day, when he became a pro in a FBB Pro League, that's right. He even competed at the Mr. Olympia looking exactly like this. Uh, not better, not better. Some people are saying, like, uh, he's natural now, but he wasn't natural back then. Check it out, guys. Was he any better back then? Honestly, it looks pretty much the same. So, I mean, at the time, when I was a teenager myself, I didn't believe him that he was natural, but after seeing this now, yeah, yeah, I can see it. He has nice genetics, for sure. Like, a really broad chest, really nice abs, very small waist, super wide shoulders, super long clavicles. So, with his genetics, with his shape, yeah, sure, I can see this was possible. It's only that the criteria back then was completely different. Today, man's physique guys are mass monsters, basically. Many of them actually have upper bodies bigger than some classy guys. Like, I can see this guy, his upper body, compared to... Uh, like, let's say, Urs Kletzinski, you know, one of the top uh, classic VZ guys. 
Lags, however, it's a different story because there is a weight cap now and these guys are trying to downsize the legs and they're just looking silly, honestly. And it all went a little bit overboard. I think this is what man's physique should basically look like. I think this is this should be the standard, honestly. Like this is what it was back in the day. That's what the original thought was. You know, a beach body, a static body that anybody would find uh, normal. Like nobody would say it's too much muscle. That's what man's physique was and it should be all about, but it is what it is. Anyways, Jeff competed here. It's a natural amateur show. So maybe if he turns pro here, he moves to the pros, natural man's physique pros. I mean, he does look great. I gotta say that. I mean, not for like bodybuilding standards, but for what man's physique was supposed to be at the beginning. This is it. This is good. What do you guys think? Tell me down below. And finally, we got an off-season physique update of Gudwito. And this is what a bodybuilder in their off-season should look like, I mean, size-wise. Compare this to Patrick Moore, you know, he needs to add a lot more tissue to be on the level of this guy. And this guy didn't even manage to qualify for the Mr. Olympia this year. I mean, he was uh, third at the Arnold Classic Brazil, and uh, he was second at the Detroit Pro. And as he says here, he's, um, this is not even his off-season, this is him just being off of everything, I guess. And, you know, he probably ate a lot of food and he was very sensitive after the show, so he blew up, kinda. But he doesn't have that crazy hardness that he usually has in the off-season, so now he's gonna start his off-season. Meaning, he's gonna start his cycle, he's gonna start actually putting on some new tissue. When is his next show? I have no idea at this point, he didn't say anything so far. It's not Mr. Olympia, that's for sure. It's gonna be one of the shows before the Mr. Olympia. He's gonna to try to qualify for the Mr. Olympia this year. I don't know. I don't know. If he's gonna start his offseason now, then he probably doesn't have enough time to do that. So, yeah, I guess maybe next year he does another show and qualifies. I think he can qualify next year easily. Maybe even this year if he does some of the easier shows to win. But I think it would be smarter for him to take another offseason to put on a little bit more muscle... And then he's probably gonna be pretty much unstoppable, because he was amazing this year, his rookie year as a pro, guys. So, Gudwito is a crazy potential, man. I mean, he can be one of the top guys at the Mr. Olympia in, the, in a couple of years. I can see that, definitely. What about you? Do you see this? Anyways, whatever you see, tell me down below in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. For more content like this about bodybuilding, stay tuned, subscribe to the channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. All the best, and bye-bye.